Hello everyone, uh, welcome you to this class of today. Uh, I hope uh, you were able to go through uh, what I discussed it in the last class. Now uh, what we did uh, in the last class was something to do with the asymmetric reduction. Initially we saw that uh, we can modify the uh, nucleophilic reducing agents such as sodium borohydride or uh, lithium aluminum hydride uh, into the corresponding uh, chirally modified uh, reducing agents where the hydrogens uh, say at the up to the uh, three, um, three hydrogens we can replace by chiral uh, ligands and such as you can make sodium boro say for example you have R star 3 H and likewise lithium aluminum uh, we can make it as O R star 3 H. But of course we can also use uh, even less than 3 uh, but as long as there is at least one hydrogen which is present. Likewise this electrophilic uh, uh, diabol uh, we can also modify and uh, of course we can um, make use of the reducing agent for the chiral uh, uh, reductions provided that the the diabol path is, is chiral. And like that we, we saw another reducing agent uh, which uh, was um, derived from alpha pinene base and we saw how that uh, reducing agent which had a uh, boron and a chlorine and then of course we had a part of R star here, R star here which led uh, eventually to the for reduction of the ketone and of course uh, the alpha pinene which is comes out from the reaction uh, from the salt from the this particular reducing agent. So this behaves like a reducing agent but it this does not have a hydrogen as a hydride attached to boron directly but it is in this particular part which is what uh, after the hydride is transferred uh, leads to the alpha pinene plus of course we get a chiral alcohol. So these are all uh, different types of uh, reducing agents which we discussed and uh, we also uh, mentioned uh, about um, uh, this fact that each of these uh, reducing agents uh, is required at least in one mole equivalent. Uh, so therefore uh, it is not something which is useful uh, in a long run on a large scale. But then we uh, introduce Kori Bakshi Shibata. Uh, ligand or a chiral part which allows modification of the BH3 and uh, this uh, Kori Bakshi Shibata catalyst then allows a reduction of the ketones to uh, the corresponding alcohols in a predictable uh, geometry uh, manner and uh, thus we can uh, before starting we can of course we can uh, choose which kind of uh, Kori Bakshi Shibata uh, ligand is to be taken. As we discussed it, it comes from uh, proline and we can take uh, R proline or S proline depending on which particular uh, enantiomerically pure uh, alcohol that is required. So obviously when we start with R proline we get one enantiomer of alcohol of the same molecule we get S enantiomer if we take the S proline or the opposite enantiomer if we take S proline. And then we saw how these kind of catalysts uh, uh, or the ligands which can convert uh, a molecule ketone like this into an amino acid and uh, then of course we can uh, see how these uh, particular molecules can be made unnatural uh, amino acids. So we have a possibility of getting a variety of uh, amino acids, alpha amino acids specific, specifically uh, in uh, uh, chiral natural or unnatural uh, fashion. So these are the modifications of the, uh, the catalyst uh, that we discussed. 
Of course, in this case uh, we saw that the reducing agent is a borane which can be uh, uh, say uh, you have R prime uh, 2, we can have any kind of borane, we have normal borane or BH3 or we have any catechol borane or any other borane that we can uh, think about using it. So this is what we did in the last class. Now we see how the CC bond formations can be done and uh, CC bond formation uh, basically initially was uh, done uh, by uh, generating a carbon ion uh, which is a stabilized carbon ion because it gives uh, enolate. Uh, so if we have a ketone and uh, if we treat with a non-nucleophilic base, so you have a non-nucleophilic uh, base uh, and then react with the ketone, we get an enolate. We are not uh, taking uh, uh, this aldehyde to, uh, as a carbonyl part to generate the corresponding enolates because the enolates generated from aldehydes are very, very reactive and aldehydes are um, uh, very uh, electrophilic in the nature and therefore uh, they uh, generally condense with each other and therefore it is not very convenient to generate uh, an enolate from an aldehyde. But then we can take a ketone or we can also take an ester or we can take an amide which are uh, easy to generate the enolate from the corresponding uh, molecules. Now uh, this uh, ketone and the enolate they are reversible uh, so and reversibility depends on, on acidity of the carbonyl group uh, or the carbonyl compound and strength of the base. So obviously if uh, this hydrogen here is uh, very acidic uh, due to uh, the electron withdrawing nature of say for example R prime or even R can affect uh, the electrophilicity uh, of this particular carbonyl uh, group and thus the acidity of this hydrogen would uh, vary depending on what substitutions uh, we are putting around. And uh, also we can uh, take uh, a strong base uh, and therefore the strength of the base would also matter because if it is a strong base obviously it will uh, the, uh, you pick up the hydrogen very fast and would not uh, then uh, allow it back for the uh, equilibrium to go. Now uh, this is how uh, a ketone is uh, converted to an enolate and uh, one can see that uh, we can write the uh, enolate uh, as a, a resonance structure in this fashion that you have the uh, negative charge moving on to uh, the uh, carbon alpha to the carbonyl group in this fashion. So obviously we can go back here and, and we can generate the enolate. So it is like a, uh, a, a resonance structure and therefore we have a possibility of uh, uh, this being a nucleophile or this being a nucleophile. So it is an ambident nucleophile, these are all ambident nucleophiles, they can react either on carbon or on oxygen, uh, but this can be controlled uh, to give uh, if one wants the CC bond formation to take place. So we can, we, there are factors that we have to uh, look at and there are conditions which we will have to meet with to uh, guide the uh, CC bond formation via this particular uh, enolate um, molecule uh, which is, which is uh, having a resonance structure with the anion on the, on the carbon. Uh, now enolates really do exist, they are not just resonance forms which reflect some of the character of the real species in solution but actually they have been isolated and their X-ray crystal structures determined. So if we have a carbon ion of uh, this type, it will exist in its uh, enolate form as a resonance structure and both these uh, anions, one carbon ion, one enolate ion would show a nucleophilic character and therefore they are ambient nucleophiles. One of course leads to CL alkylation and other leads to O alkylation. So if O alkylation of uh, this enolate is uh, 
taking place then of course we get the corresponding enol ether and if C alkylation takes place then we get alpha alkylated ketone like in this case we have alpha methylated ketone so in addition to this uh, dual character of this particular ambient nucleophile where O and C alkylations can occur and we need to control them if we want one of them to occur but in addition to this we also have a possibility of polyalkylation that is this particular ketone can undergo deprotonation here by base present in the reaction medium or by the carbon ion present in the reaction medium to make another carbon ion like this which can then react with methyl iodide to form a dimethylated compound now this dimethylated compound in principle has three more hydrogens alpha to the carbonyl group which can be deprotonated and each of them can undergo alkylation eventually to lead to polyalkylation so these two problems that is O and C alkylation and also polyalkylation are something that we need to worry about and therefore we need to see what are the factors that allow these reactions to be controlled and one thing we can definitely do for uh, O alkylation or C alkylation specifically is that say you have start with this particular uh, enolate ion and if this enolate ion attacks on directly onto the uh, electrophilic uh, agent then uh, you have uh, a, um, a CR oxygen carbon bond which is formed like this and of course if it attacks from uh, uh, the carbon uh, as a nucleophile then we get the carbon carbon bond. Uh, now we can also use uh, an aldehyde to form an aldol of this type which can of course lead to the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So these are the things which can be done by the enolate which is formed from the corresponding ketone. So we have a ketone which can then lead to the formation of uh, this enolate and that can allow a O or C alkylation to form and also this kind of alpha beta unsaturated ketone via the aldol. Now O alkylation is generally favored uh, by hard electrophiles uh, where uh, oxygen based leaving groups are there this is leaving group or uh, you have a large counter cation so this particular M plus should be large. So if we have uh, a large counter cation and then of course uh, the charge is separated and therefore the negative charge can um, uh, uh, attack directly onto the uh, particular uh, electrophile. And uh, dipolar aprotic solvents uh, solvate M plus. That means if we have uh, uh, dipolar aprotic solvents like uh, DMSO or acetonitrile or DMF they would have a, a coordination with the M plus and then the M plus is somewhat removed and therefore the O minus negative charge is available for the electrophile to attack. So uh, that is how uh, O alkylation can be favored. Uh, now if we have uh, C alkylation to form then we have to have soft electrophiles uh, especially when we have a uh, iodide uh, molecules as electrophiles where uh, iodine is a this is I and iodine is a leaving group. So you have an R say R2 and I. So this is a leaving group which is a uh, very um, soft electrophile. Uh, this is a soft electrophile and therefore if we have I as a leaving group then it is easy. At the same time if we have a small counter cation say for example lithium plus because it sticks to the oxygen and therefore the negative charge on the oxygen is not uh, easily available for electrophiles to attack and therefore uh, the uh, double bond uh, attacks rather than the O minus attacking. And of course we have protic solvents uh, solvated O minus so if we have a protic solvent like methanol or ethanol or something of that sort then of course the O minus of the enolate would have a kind of uh, hydrogen bonding with, uh, with the as proton of the solvent and thus the, the negative charge is not available for the nucleophilic attack and thus the double bond 
attacks and then C alkylation is favored. So, we can do these kinds of modifications and then uh, we can uh, tune the reaction for either O or C alkylation as the case may be. Uh, but of course, uh, polyalkylations uh, do take place and therefore, there should be some modi more modifications. So, once again we just simply recap what we studied just now. Now, let us take uh, the reaction of an enolate with methyl iodide. First of all, methyl iodide is a weak electrophile and the cation coordination is strong with the enolate of O- minus because it has greater negative charge density. Due to these two factors, the thermodynamically more stable C alkylated product forms. On the other hand, in case of reaction with chlorotrimethylsilane, the corresponding enol silyl ether is uh, formed as it is shown here. And this is because chlorotrimethylsilane is a much stronger electrophile as compared to methyl iodide due to electronegativity difference between silicon and chlorine. And therefore, as soon as the enolate is formed, the O- reacts quickly with chlorotrimethylsilane to form the enol silyl ether. In this case, the SN2 transition state will resemble the reactants that is the enolate more than the products. Also, since OSI bond is very stable, 25 kilocalories more favorable than CSI bond, the reaction prefers to proceed via the O alkylation thermodynamically. So, these are the two other examples where C versus O alkylation can be checked. Now, to avoid this, uh, we can put a temporarily a uh, group uh, to allow CC bond formation to take place. Suppose if we want CC bond formation to take place, then we put say for example an ester group. So, we, have, we want CC bond formation to take place onto this carbon here and therefore we put an extra ester group here or we can even put a, a sulfonyl group here or we can put a nitro group here. So, basically uh, these ester, sulfoyl, sulfonyl and the nitro group increase the, electro, uh, the uh, electrophilicity of the hydrogens which are present and thus formation of an ion is much more easy onto these carbons rather than onto these carbons. So, the proton which is uh, on the left hand side uh, of the carbonyl group as you see is uh, less acidic than on the right side which is uh, next to the ester or sulfonyl or the nitro group. And therefore, the deprotonation occurs uh, onto that particular carbon atom and then CC bond formation uh, readily occurs on these. Uh, and also we can choose uh, soft uh, electrophiles because now the anion is stabilized and therefore it is a soft nucleophile and with the help of soft nucleophile we can use uh, the electrophilic uh, CC bond formation to take place like this. But then this also of course has uh, some uh, negative points that it you have to introduce these groups and then remove if they are not needed it. So therefore, uh, it is uh, somewhat inconvenient. Uh, as you can see that we can here do the hyd hydrolysis of the ester uh, under basic conditions or under acidic conditions and once we get this uh, uh, carboxylic acid then we heat it and then decarboxylation will give uh, this particular molecule. Likewise, we can use here Rani nickel to uh, Rani nickel to do this or aluminum amalgam. Uh, or such kind of things uh, reducing agents we do it where carbon uh, sulfur bond is broken. And similarly here say you can use tributyltin hydride uh, and AIBN as we discussed earlier that we can remove the nitro group to the corresponding hydrogen. So, these are the various um, ways by which uh, we can uh, carry out the uh, CC bond formation in a, in a directive manner and uh, we remove, but then, then these need, these need uh, two extra steps. So, uh, in a Gilbert Stark at Columbia University introduced uh, enamines as we can see that we can take a ketone and react with a base uh, sorry this uh, secondary um, amine 
uh, like say pyrrolidine and then we can get the uh, enamine which is of course in resonance with this kind of uh, species. So we have an enamine and uh, when Rx is added the negative charge attaches to the R we can get here and then hydrolysis uh, uh, leads to the generation of the ketone. So this way we can do alkylation, we can also do acylation, we can do a Michael addition and there is no self condensation in these cases. So that is something uh, very useful as advantages. But uh, what are the disadvantages uh, of these stark enamine reaction is that the Rx has to be very reactive preferably a primary halide or uh, any other living group uh, like tosylate or mesylate or triflate or whatever. And uh, it is better to have an allylic or benzylic uh, uh, groups uh, as Rx or Michael acceptor. Uh, unfortunately, the sterically bulky and tertiary uh, Rx type of uh, electrophilic molecules do not react with this these enamines. So there are some uh, problems which are associated with it. At the same time uh, with unsymmetrical ketones also there is a the little problem. Suppose we start with an unsymmetrical ketone like this and we uh, make the enamine by reacting with the pyrrolidine and paratalin sulfonic acid and eventually we get, uh, we expect uh, to get uh, either of the two enamines because it is an unsymmetrical ketone and therefore when the enamine is uh, formed it could form on this side or it could form on this side. So uh, the major one that is formed is this and the minor one is this. Now why it is minor is because the hydrogens which are present here give uh, this kind of steric hindrance to um, this R group and therefore uh, there is a uh, steric uh, repulsion and then the compound form is in minor amount. But if we want this enamine uh, for the say electrophilic reaction on onto this uh, particular part of the molecule say you want to introduce here say X uh, whatever X may be then it is not very easy uh, using enamine because enamines themselves will not form in a major amount. Uh, besides N alkylation the, uh, the C alkylation, N alkylation also occurs and uh, it is possible that in cases where allylic and benzylic halides are, are dealt with N alkylated for product may rearrange to the C alkylated product. But if it does not, for example here it can uh, rearrange in this fashion after the N alkylation has happened. Then of course we get the C alkylation and then when the hydrolysis is done from here then of course we can get the corresponding ketone. But then if the such a uh, rearrangement does not take place this kind of uh, uh, N to C uh, alkylation then of course we have a problem. So uh, there are problems associated with it nevertheless it has been a very useful method like for example as you can see that uh, if we take an enamine of uh, this kind and react with an alpha beta unsaturated ketone such as methyl vinyl ketone then we get this particular type of uh, bicyclic molecule in one step. How does this reaction uh, occur? That this enamine reacts with the methyl vinyl ketone uh, in Michael addition fashion to lead to the formation of this particular enolate which is in uh, resonance with the corresponding uh, carbon ion like this. Uh, this carbon ion then uh, picks up the proton uh, from the other side of the carbonyl group and generates the anion here. And this anion then undergoes cyclization to form the bicyclic product. In a similar fashion, if we take another enamine like this, then it reacts with methyl vinyl ketone in ethylene glycol under acidic conditions at 120 degrees. Again the Michael addition up takes place to form this enolate. This enolate is in resonance with the corresponding carbon ion like this similar to what we observed uh, here. Now this anion then takes up the proton from here generates another anion which of course will be existing in the form of enolate also. And this enolate then undergoes cyclization to form a molecule which is called as mesembrine which is a natural product. So uh, that is how uh, reactions of uh, enamines uh, take place.
and uh, uh, they are useful in many uh, uh, synthetic operations. However, uh, we know that there are some problems associated with the uh, inamine chemistry. And thus, uh, there, are, there should be some other way of uh, addressing these uh, issues. So from that angle, uh, we will uh, look at the other aspects of uh, CC bond formation, what are the further developments that have taken place and eventually the aim is to make sure that we get optically pure um, CC bond uh, formation uh, because that is also a very important in addition to asymmetric reduction or asymmetric uh, oxidation, we also need to have methods which allow asymmetric CC bond formation to take place. And therefore, we will look at several ways of uh, how the developments have occurred uh, in, in terms of uh, allowing CC bond formation to take place in asymmetric fashion. So, we will take up uh, the remaining part uh, in the next class and then see how uh, we can proceed further. Till then, you can take care of uh, uh, these, uh, these kind of uh, things that I have discussed today and then be ready for the next class. Till then, bye. Thank you.